Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Welcome to Personal Protective Equipment. This information comes directly from Chapter 8 in your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manual. Now let's get started with our course objectives. We're going to define chemical resistance and know if the material is resistant to the chemical being used or not. We're going to choose the appropriate safety equipment and respirators. We're going to choose a self-contained breathing apparatus. We're going to examine PPE or personal protective equipment for wear and tear. And then we're going to properly dispose of it when we're finished with it. And then we're going to store and clean the PPE if it is not a disposable piece of uh, clothing that is protecting us from the pesticide. So we do have PPE that is designed for one-time use, and then we have PPE that we can use uh, over and over again if we properly clean it and properly store it and have it available for the next application use. So chemical resistance. We have water resistant, waterproof, and chemical resistance. And water resistance means that the clothing keeps small uh, spray or splashes from penetrating the material. Waterproof keeps any water soluble materials completely out. So water resistance, you can kind of think maybe towards like a raincoat that would kind of shed it and maybe bead up. It's not going to penetrate all the way through, but if you jumped in the swimming pool, it's going to get wet and you're going to get wet. Waterproof means that any water soluble materials is completely out. So you could be caught in the rain, um, full rain, full downpour, you're going to be dry on the inside. Nothing is going to uh, penetrate through it. Chemical resistant means that there's no measurable amount of pesticide that can penetrate the material. It's often stated in exposure time, which basically is saying uh, if you're making a chemical application for 20 minutes, that this material will be chemical resistant. Any other time beyond that, you may risk... Uh, being exposed to that pesticide. And that just depends on the material that you're using and more or less the, the chemical, the pesticide. So again, you got to read that label and that directions for use and see how long that you can wear that PPE while you're applying the pesticide. So again, guys, a lot of information uh, on the labels, really everything that we need to know about our application, we're going to find uh, on the label. Cotton, leather, canvas, or other absorbent materials are not chemically resistant. Your best choices for chemical resistance would be plastics, rubber, or non-woven fabrics coated with a plastic or Tyvek. And you'll see a lot of pesticide applicators wear like a Tyvek suit. Uh, it covers the entire body. It's got the hood that comes up over it. And if they're wearing something like that, then they're going to have the rubber gloves, the rubber boots, and then they're going to have some type of uh, breathing apparatus or uh, respirator that they are using uh, when they are fully covered uh, like that. And the Tyvek is good. It is a good choice. But guys, never ever use cotton or even leather gloves, even the mechanics gloves that, that we can get at the auto parts store. You don't want any of those things because they get wet. They're going to hold that pesticide uh, solution to your palms and to your hands. You don't want that. They need to be made of plastic rubber or that non-woven uh, fabric. Um, check for signs that the material is not resistant. You're going to look for color changes. If your PPE has is, is had a color change, uh, it may not be chemically resistant anymore. Uh, if it becomes soft or spongy, if it swells or bubbles up, if it dissolves or turns to a jelly-like substance, if it cracks or it has holes in it, or if it stiffens or becomes brittle, this, are, this is signs that it may not be resistant to the chemical uh, anymore and that it's time to replace it. And guys, you should replace your PPE E often anyway. I know the expensive respirators, you know, you'll want to clean and stuff, but you're changing the filters on them constantly. But these Nivex suits and stuff, they're inexpensive. Use them one time and get rid of them. You don't need to have them on uh, or uh, use them more than once. I mean, they're, they're um, inexpensive enough that you can purchase it. And here, uh, the, the spray applicator, and it looks like he's spraying maybe some grass uh, in the shrub beds along the, the street here, but he's wearing a full suit. I would say this might be a little bit overboard. This is more likely for demonstration, hopefully, but it'll probably, you know, spraying that looks like crabgrass there that he's uh, probably spraying Roundup. But, um, you know, he's got the rubber boots, the Nivex suit, the, the green uh, waterproof gloves, and he's wearing a hat, but he does have the eye protection on. So he is applying a pesticide that does not need a respirator. 
The individual here uh, to the right is wearing the safety glasses, uh, chemical resistant coveralls, uh, chemical resistant rubber gloves, chemical resistant rubber, rubber boots, and then he is also wearing a respirator. So he's spraying something a little more stronger than his uh, coworker here to the left. So, and you know, this is in the agricultural field um, using a nice stainless steel hand uh, sprayer there. So um, there's uh, really no telling what he's applying there, but you know, he's taking all the measures. I'd say if I had um, the respirator on and glasses, I'd probably go ahead and have a hood uh, over my, uh, my head as well. Because if you've seen the last lecture, uh, how much exposure, you know, your forehead can actually absorb uh, that chemical. Work clothes, bare minimum should always be long sleeves and pants, socks and shoes. Guys always tell you, you know, we need long pants in this industry. Uh, we need the long sleeve shirts. And people say, well, it's too hot to do that. Actually, you're a lot cooler when you're wearing long sleeves and long pants anyway, because the sun's not beating on you. But that gives you the, you know, the better protection uh, for it, but always check the label requirements of the coveralls or the chemical resistant suit or apron that you're uh, going to use. And it will tell you exactly what you need in that directions for use um, when applying the pesticide and when mixing and or loading uh, the pesticide when it's in its uh, concentrate form. Your coveralls, make sure the coveralls are made from chemical resistant material. Securely uh, close the opening so the entire body is covered so you don't want to leave it uh, unzipped part of the way. Do not tuck the shirt in if it is a two-piece suit. Let the shirt extend over the pants. That way you don't have any like drift that comes back on you that can roll down into it. If it is over the pants, it'll roll off and then onto the pants. Um, coverall should be loose fitting to create another layer between the suit and your skin. And that creates like a, an insulator, like a uh, layer of air that's going to insulate you from the, uh, the pesticide. And it's also going to help you keep a little bit cooler too if you got some uh, air in between you. The chemical resistant suit or apron, check the pesticide label to see if you should wear a chemical resistant suit or apron, especially when mixing and loading. Make sure that the suit is made of rubber or plastic. And then the apron should extend from at least your neck to at least uh, past your knees. And so that is some serious stuff there when you're uh, uh, mixing the concentrate formulas. Um, at the mixed load site. Your gloves and footwear exposure to the hands is reduced by 99% if you're wearing chemical resistant gloves. Most products require the use of gloves when handling or mixing, the, the big green gloves that we just seen, seen in the previous pictures. Exposure to the feet is also common, so always wear sturdy footwear. Guys, keep those rubber boots in your truck, slide them up over your tennis shoes or your work boots because at a mixed load site, you're climbing up on the sprayer, you're in the back of the truck, you're on the top of the tractor, um, you may be standing on top of the trailer putting in the, uh, the pesticide into the tank. You step back, some of it drops, and it hits you right on your tennis shoes. Well, you could be an hour away from getting a new pair of shoes. You don't want that chemical up against your feet. You don't want it to soak through the tennis shoe get to your sock and then be there on your foot rubbing all day long. You immediately have to take that off. So why not throw on the rubber boots? They're inexpensive. You can get them in any big box store, any department store, um, and, and just keep them in the truck. You may not have to wear them while you're applying the pesticide to the target site, but you may have to wear them while you are mixing and loading the product. So how to wear your gloves. If your hands will be low, so you're spraying down, you're spraying turf grass, you would wear the gloves under your sleeves. If you're spraying above, you would wear your gloves over the sleeves with the cuff folded up, and that's gonna keep it from getting down into your, um, your cuff sleeve. You don't want any of that pesticide going down in here and rubbing against you uh, all day long. If working with uh, hands both raised and lowered, wear gloves over the sleeves and then tightly cuff or secure with heavy duty tape. And so if you're going back and forth with it. Hats, wide brimmed hats or hoods protect when spraying overhead, uh, like a plastic safari hat with a uh, sweatband is a good choice. But that sweatband needs to be plastic. It does not need to be uh, made of a cloth or cloth-like material where it could absorb um, any sweat or any 
of the pesticide residue or that, that could get on it. You need it, it needs to be plastic. The hat must not contain an absorbent material, just what I said. Many chemical resistant suits or jackets will have an attached hood and all your Tyvek suits would have uh, that hood on there for you. Protecting your eyes, here we have the full covered face shield. This is highly recommended when mixing and loading uh, at the load site. And then you may only need to wear this when applying the, uh, the pesticide to someone's property. And you know, typically I would even wear this when, when spraying Roundup. Check the label for eye protection requirements. Safety glasses or face shields are best. They're comfortable. Make sure that they are comfortable. Make sure that there's no fogging or sweating. Uh, you can get some that will help you do that, or they've got the little cloths that you can wipe them down that will prevent them from fogging up. And then they need to provide good protection. Um, you know, and there's a debate going on. You know, I hear it at every pesticide training event that I go to. You know, eye protection, guys, is a pair of sunglasses. You know, they doesn't, some of your labels just specify eye protection. Well, is that sunglasses? Is it goggles? Is it the full face shield? If it just says eye protection, then really sunglasses are okay. Um, but I would always take it up a notch and, and at least have uh, some of the goggles or more of your safety type glasses versus uh, my sunglasses. Plus, I wouldn't want to mess the sunglasses up and take a chance of getting any of the pesticide residue on it. I'd wear my safety glasses. That way I can actually sterilize them, get them clean, and be able to use them the, the next time. Uh, worker protection standard, guys. Uh, if the label requires goggles, then each of the workers must have access to an emergency eye wash fountain or at least um, a portable eye wash station that you could probably keep on the truck that's got the, uh, the, the squirt bottles in it. They have to have uh, access to it uh, with the WPS. Uh, protecting your lungs, here we have two types of respirators, the one on the right with the 3M, you know, you know, putting out a dust or whatever. It's always good to, to keep some of those in your trucks. Um, you know, and these are even good for other landscape uses, blowing leaves, putting out mulch and stuff, even pine needles that are dusty. But, um, you know, definitely if the label requires that you need that as a minimum, make sure you've got it. Here we have the one that we can change the cartridge and it's covering your whole face. Uh, and so that's a very good protection there. Um, these cartridges will um, keep you from breathing in the uh, the fumes or any, any of the type dust or even the spray uh, droplets when you're applying the pesticide. Your nose, throat, and uh, lungs are more absorbent than your skin, so we gotta protect our lungs. Wear a respirator if there's any chance of exposure through inhalation. It's better safe than uh, sorry, guys. You know, you can't go back and correct it after it's already happened to you. Check with OSHA standards when selecting a respirator. Some of these that you would uh, have to go to like a class. If you're using the self-contained breathing apparatus, uh, you're gonna have to go to a certification class. You're gonna have to get fitted and make sure that uh, your respirator fits your face perfectly and that there's no issues with it when you get out into the, uh, the field uh, applying the pesticides. My dad had to do that. He uh, um, did that for his farm and went and got suited and fitted for everything. And then he said, it's just too much trouble. When I have to do this, I only have to do it one time a year. It's better just to sub it out because if you've got the one person suited up like that in the field, then you've got to have somebody standing by suited up that's already been through the fitting test in class uh, in case that worker goes down. So um, it was just easier to uh, subcontract that out. We have supplied air respirators, uh, uses a long hose and a full face mask. Um, so this would work, you know, good in enclosed environments, maybe if you have to step into the greenhouse or something. Uh, but, uh, you know, full coverage of the face, lungs and everything. So a uh, very good protection and you've got fresh air. Uh, here is the scuba or the self-contained breathing apparatus. You know, we take the U out. If it was the U, it'd be, be for underwater. But uh, uh, these use a compressed air tank and it's giving you uh, air to breathe. So, uh, you know, this looks like an inspector that's maybe going in uh, to a area that's already been treated. And so um, freeze up their hand, they can make notes and stuff like that. But works well, like if you're having to, uh, you know, use a type of hose sprayer off of a reel coming off of a large truck or something. So, uh, but very good protection here. Um, I would say maybe use a little better gloves. If I'm having to wear all this, 
uh, I'd want some uh, chemical resistant gloves there. Again, those uh, can get wet and actually um, seep through and get to, to your hands there. Um, air purifying respirator. Use physical chemical filters that trap and remove the contaminants. Uh, comes in many different forms, and you know we just saw that in the previous slide, uh, but uh, still good to have. These are even good if you're putting out even you know pre-emergent uh, in shrub beds. You know one of the pre-em type materials, um, and even like I said, even sp spreading pine needles, it's good to have that because a lot of people may um, get a little dusty with that. Use your respirator correctly. Use it a positive or negative pressure test to check the fit. The positive pressure, you'll cover the exhalation valve and exhale gently to test for a slight positive pressure. And then with the negative pressure, close the inlet valves, then inhale gently so that the face piece collapses slightly. Hold the breath for 10 seconds to make sure there is no leakage. And we've got a good picture here, there. Here's the positive pressure fit. We cover exhalation valve and try to exhale. And then with the negative pressure test, we cover the inlets and then we try to inhale. And disposable, if something is designed to be disposable, do not reuse this item. It should be discarded after contamination or exposure. Again, they're inexpensive enough that you can uh, afford it. And guys, if you're doing this for a client, this is a billable expense that, I mean, this is part of doing business. You have to do it, discard of the stuff. It's a lot easier. And I'd much rather discard of a disposable Tyvek suit than to try to clean and store um, a suit that I'm going to be wearing, you know, multiple times. It's just a lot easier to to dispose of it properly and get a new one the next time. Reusables again, although reusable PPE should be replaced periodically to prevent exposure due to wear and tear. Again, everything that we use, guys, I mean, there's a lifespan on it. Just the everyday wear and tear of it could tear a hole or whatever. So you're going to have to replace it periodically. Make sure to clean all the PPE between uses, even only if worn briefly. Unwashed PPE can build up the toxic levels of the chemical uh, even if it is not highly toxic. So just repeated use, it could build up just a little bit at a time where it's dangerous enough uh, to harm you. Washing and drying the PPE, always wash separately from regular clothing. Wash only a few items at a time, so just the clothes that you had on that day is all you need to put in. Don't put your towel that you uh, need to dry off with after the shower. It needs to be separate. Use a heavy detergent on the hot water cycle, the longest cycle, and then use two rinse cycles for it. And then after you've washed the clothes, you need to run the washer by itself to get any of that pe pesticide residue out of the uh, washing machine. And do that before you wash any of your uh, uh, personal belongings of, of yourself or your families. Maintaining your eyewear and respirators, wash with detergent and hot water. Sanitize by soaking in a mixture of two tablespoons of bleach per gallon of water. Rinse it thoroughly and then dry thoroughly uh, and let hang to dry. Um, you'll be able to smell that Clorox from here on out after doing that. We used to do that in the Army and it was um, very uh, strong at times. If you remove your respirator between handling activities, wipe the body and face place with a uh, uh, face piece with a, a clean cloth and then remove any pre-filters. These do not uh, lose the effect effectiveness uh, when exposed to air. And then seal the respirator in an airtight container. At the end of each workday, remove the, the pre-filters and discard of other filters, cartridges and canisters or seal in the airtight container if they are reusable. Uh, don't let them be out exposed. Clean and, and store the respirator or discard if disposable. So you need to clean this stuff every day. Just like your tanks when you come in, your backpack sprayers or your truck tanks and your fertilized spreaders, you've got to clean those. You should wear your PPE when cleaning your equipment and then decide whether you're going to reuse the PPE or dispose of it properly. Don't take it off on the way back to the shop and then have to, to get back and then expect to um, do it all again. Guys, this concludes uh, chapter eight, PPE. Probably one of the most important chapters uh, that we have, guys, because uh, it is so important that we protect ourselves. And when we protect ourselves, we're automatically thinking protect the environment, our neighbors, our family, our friends, and our pets. So anyway, I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next lecture.